Okay, this is Harry Guinness for Computers Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to secure your files like a secret agent. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to use some applications, one of which was TrueCrypt, to get some really good computer security. However, in that tutorial, I mentioned that TrueCrypt offered a load of extra security features far beyond what most people need. In this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you actually need these extra features. So I'm going to show you how to really secure your files using TrueCrypt. I've got TrueCrypt open here, so I'm going to start by creating a volume. As before, just hit Create Volume to open up the Creation Wizard. We're going to create an encrypted file container. Hit Next. This time, we're going to create a hidden TrueCrypt volume. TrueCrypt volumes work by having a fixed size from the start. Anything that's not filled with real files is just filled with random data. This means you can never tell whether a TrueCrypt volume contains files or is empty or whatever. This allows for a really clever extra security feature. It's possible to have another TrueCrypt volume nested inside the random data of an external TrueCrypt volume. Both TrueCrypt volumes will have different passwords. Depending on which password you enter determines which TrueCrypt volume you open. This gives you plausible deniability if you're ever being extorted or tortured. Hopefully that won't happen to you, but if it does, it's a great extra security feature. All you do is you give up the password to the external volume. They enter that password and open up the external volume and they find some files that appear sensitive while you still keep the files in the internal volume secret. So let's do that. Click Hidden TrueCrypt Volume and then click Next. First, we're going to create the external volume. So we need to create, find the location. Uh, so I'm going to use a image file from a collection of DNGs as the exterior so 2013, here we go. Uh, I'd normally use one of the ones buried down in the middle, but I don't want to go to the hassle of having to find it again when it comes to mounting it. So I'm just gonna use IMG 9176. This is another great security feature you can do. When you're creating your volume, if you create it from a file such as a DNG file that's 20 megabytes in size, you get a really nice sized volume that you can hide in among 100, 150 other files which makes finding your TrueCrypt volume an absolute nightmare for enemy agents. So I'm going to use this one, click Save. It will ask if I want to replace the file. It's a junk picture, so I'm happy to. Click Next to continue. Next, this is the step where we get to mess around with encryption options. In the previous tutorial, I said just use AES. It's far better than what most people are using. It's the best balance between security and convenience, but TrueCrypt lets you stack different algorithms on top of each other. So let's go wild and we'll use three algorithms stacked together. You can also run a benchmark to see what effect this will have on the read-write speeds of your volume. So I'm just gonna run that there so you can see that. Uh, hit benchmark and leave that do its thing for a few seconds and you can see with just AES you're getting 900 megabytes on my 2011 MacBook Air encryption and 650 decryption but the Serpent 2Fish AES which he selected only gives you 55 megabits per second or megabytes per second encryption and 41 decryption so it's much much slower if you're storing high res spy plane videos this might be a problem but if you're just storing text files you won't really notice too much of a hit so i'm going to run with the serpent two fish aes and go really secure click next the outer volume size okay so i want this to match my dng file camouflage so i'm going to go with 21 megabytes i have a canon 650d and the photos it takes are between about 17 and 24 megabytes in size. So this is right in the middle. Nothing particularly suspicious about it. Click Next. We're going to use a password as well as some key files. So the password I'm just going to make really simple. 
I would be using a much longer password, but I don't want to show you me failing to type 20 characters when it comes to logging into it. To use key files, you click the Use Key Files checkbox, and then we're going to select some key files. This brings up the key files menu, so I'm going to go Add Key Files. We're going to go, and we're going to use a picture from the same folder, which image 9197.dng, I think, is our volume. So let's use image 9198.dng as our key file. Click open to select that as a key file then we'll click OK. What happens is TrueCrypt uses some details about the key files in the encryption process. This means that when you mount your TrueCrypt volume in addition to entering your password you have to point it to the key files. Even if you enter the right password but don't point to the correct key files it's not going to open. So key files act just like keys. If you delete a key file or lose it or store it on a USB key, the volume's inaccessible. If you bring it back, you can get access to the volume again. So they're a really great way to lock things down even more. I've got my key file selected, my password entered, click next. I will get this warning. If I was doing this for real, I would obviously be using a much longer string. It recommends 20 characters, which you can't go wrong with. Click yes. Uh, now we've got to create the random uh, pool from which it will pull the header key and the master key. You've got to move your mouse around randomly to generate that. Computers are bad at generating random numbers. So this makes it possible. Once that's done, click format. It says the file already cr exists. That's fine. We're going to replace it. So we'll click yes. That will create the outer volume. Now, what you really should be doing is adding some random files to the outer volume. Now, things that look like you might want to hide them, but you don't worry about people seeing them if you're being tortured or extorted. TrueCrypt then analyzes the free space in the volume to determine the maximum size of the hidden compartment. You can add files later, but it's a bad idea because you run the risk that they'll overwrite the contents of the inner volume, which kind of defeats the purpose. I don't particularly want to show you guys any sensitive files, so I'm going to leave it empty for the moment. But now, if I was doing this properly, I would be adding some dodgy pictures and some financial records and all sorts of things that look like I might want to keep them secret. Click next to start creating the inner volume. TrueCrypt will do its thing, giving a little bit of beach ball as it gets everything set up. There we go. Time to create the hidden volume. So we'll click next. Uh, we're going to use Serpent Two Fish AES again. Click next. TrueCrypt has analyzed the free space in the container volume to determine what's the maximum size we can have the hidden volume be. Because we didn't add any files, it's pretty close to what the maximum size of the outer volume is. If we'd added files, it would obviously be smaller. I'm just going to run with 10 megabytes for the time being and click next. Now we need to add a different password. So I'm going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, which is slightly different to the password I entered last time. And we're not going to use any key files. This means that if we enter the password I entered earlier, we get taken to the outer volume, whereas if we enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we get taken to the inner volume. Click Next. It gives me the short password warning. Again, I'll be using a longer password if I was doing this for real. Hit yes. File system format type fat. That's grand. Click next. Create another random pool. Click format. The hidden TrueCrypt volume has been successfully created and is ready for use. Click OK. If you want to create another volume, click next. Otherwise, click exit. All right, it's now time to mount the volume. So we hit select file and navigate to where we've got the volume 9176 that's the volume click open and click mount now we've got to enter the password if i enter 
one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll be taken to the internal volume. If I enter the other password and attach a key file, which was nine eight there, click open once it's finished loading up because these are quite big files it can take a few seconds there click OK and click OK this will mount up the external container so we'll just dismount that because we don't want to go into that that's now dismounted so if instead we go we keep that file there and hit mount and we enter one two three four five six without any key files and click OK it will mount up a slightly smaller volume so as you can see we're getting two volumes from the one true crypt vault this means that if another tuts plus author ever decides to torture or extort me to get my list of tutorial ideas i can point them to a dummy list of terrible ideas while still storing my wonderful ideas in the internal vault thanks for watching this screencast and for more information you should check out the tutorial below